Hello everybody, welcome to Sunday. Today is Sunday, April the 19th. We're starting a new week, y'all. Starting a new week. We can do this, right? Going into a new week. Today we're doing the prairie flower block. This is going to be an eight and a half by eight and a half inch quilt block when we're done, but it'll finish at eight inches in our quilts. Let me see if I can get this video pulled up. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. I say morning. It's 1214 where I am. <laughs> so great to see you. Yes. Yesterday. Yesterday. I had some measurements wrong, y'all. And I had some pieces swapped around in the wrong direction. I think I must have been half asleep when I designed, when I came out with all of these pieces. So thank you everybody for pointing out my measurements yesterday. Y'all were on it. Y'all were on it. And I went in after yesterday's video and I rearranged everything. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that now I have all the pieces right up on the screen and the layout for this block. I think everything is in the right which way today. <laughs> so great to see you everybody. Hello. Hello. So I'm going to leave the measurements for this block up on the screen in case I confused you yesterday, which I apologize. It's not unlike me to make boo-boos and mistakes. That is nothing new when it comes to what I do. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that up on the screen, but I also redid, let's see, I redid some layouts with this block so that you could see the correct Whoops, hold on a second. There we go. There we go. I redid some arrangements for this block. If you repeated this block, there's three different layouts with this block, which is pretty interesting, right? But if you keep turning them, you get even more kinds of patterns with this one block if you repeat it over and over again. Pretty cool, right? I like that a lot. So there's just three of the arrangements you could do with the prairie flower block. And these are your measurements. Oh, I'm pointing to the wrong side. There. <laughs> that way. There's your measurements. Yay, you made it. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five this or that questions and then three regular questions. So you can sew along with me live today, or you can play along with the questions. If you're watching this on the replay, I'm so glad you're here too. Feel free to answer the questions down in the comment section under the video. So great to see everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday so far. Make sure to stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you tomorrow's block and measurements as soon as we're done putting this quilt block together. Yeah, uh, at the end of yesterday's video, Miss Dorothy, I think I had it right, <laughs> but I had to change some measurements along the way yesterday. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is block number 27. Can you believe it? 27. Uh, I got my t-shirt quilt off the design wall yesterday and I put all of our blocks up behind me just playing with some arrangements. I think it looks pretty fantastic. Yes, I do. Let me scoot out of the way for a second. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da I like that a lot. I think I reserved an 8 inch space right up at the top right there. For the prairie flower block, today's block. So let me go ahead and let's take this back off the screen. We'll put this up in video number 27. I'm going to show you the fabrics that I'm using for today. I already have my pieces cut out. I'm using the same colorway as the example you see here on the screen. Let's pull that up. Here we go. Here are all of our pieces. 
cut out and ready to start. Whoa, Joanne's charges $25 to learn a block. I did not know that. Although I have seen at the checkout at our Joanne's, they have a little board and they have a block and it talks about taking a class, learn the block of the month class, but I did not know how much it cost. So look at all the money we're saving. $25 times 27 quilt blocks. You could save that money for fabric, right? Miss Jean, I don't know that I'm going to use sashing. I think I might just put it all together just like this. I do think, after playing with the arrangement up on the board, that we might have to make some 4-inch filler blocks for it all to work, like some 4 patches, something simple like that, to fill in some empty spaces. But, I don't know, it might all come together in the end anyway. I do think if you wanted to separate the blocks with sashing, that that would look pretty amazing too. Whoa, I could sign up to teach there. Hmm. That's maybe something to think about. Wow, they sometimes charge $40. Wow. That's a lot of savings in the YouTube videos, right? There you go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Friends Day. Use that money <laughs> and uh, buy some fabric. Or take a class, right? You've saved a lot of money. Maybe now you can take a class, right? Joan, if you are uh, using a cell phone, you could... Each cell phone is different, but you could take a screenshot with your cell phone. So you know what, y'all? I think I'm ready to go ahead and get started with today's block. Are you ready? Make sure you stay till the end because I think you're going to love tomorrow's block. I'm excited about tomorrow's block. All right. Uh, because... I don't see Miss Diane or Miss Chantel. Y'all be patient with me because I'm going to be watching the comments and trying to sew this quilt block together. Make sure we don't have any silliness happening in our chat, right? Sometimes that happens. Uh, oh, y'all are so welcome. Connie Joe, go watch your church and then come watch us on the replay. Yes. This video will be here indefinitely. You can come back. All right, so let's go ahead and get started for today. I think I could start a BOM. Oh, it looks like we're freezing up. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on a second. There we go. We're unfrozen. Maybe it was just my cell phone. <laughs> yes, I could have more moderators. Uh, Let's go ahead and do that before I get started because I really would like someone to be watching out for our chat and our family here. Uh, anyone want to moderate? All you really have to do is make sure that no one jumps in and starts spamming our live chat or posting things that shouldn't be posted in a quilting chat. <laughs> I keep getting spinnies on my cell phone. There we go. All 
I think it might just be my phone freezing up, y'all. <laughs> it just might be my phone. Do I have anybody who would like to moderate our chat today? Janet, yes, you can do it from your cell phone. If you see someone come in and they start some silliness, you can click on their uh, click on their comment, and then there's report, remove, or put user in timeout. Uh, all you have to do is click on their comment and uh, take care of it. Oh, there's Darlene. Sally, I'm going to sign you up as a moderator just in case Miss Darlene has to leave. And Janet, I'm going to sign you as a moderator in case they have to leave. There we go. Miss Ella, keep that in mind because if we do a video and all of the everybody else is uh, gone for the day, then I'm going to sign you up, okay? <laughs> Yes, when when this when everything gets back to normal, I'm going to have lots of free time on my hands, right? But not really. I have so many quilts that I want to do, so many patterns that I want to show you, <laughs> art quilts that I want to do, t-shirt quilts that I want to do. All right, thank you everybody for uh for moderating for me. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, uh, we have a little bit of prep work to do with this block before we get started with the layout. We're going to take the two blocks that are four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. There's a pink one and a background one. We're going to take both of those. We're going to line them one on top of the other. One on top of the other. We're going to make one cut right through the middle, corner to corner. We should be getting really good at this, right? Tomorrow we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Yes, we are. We're gonna cut these two blocks right down the middle. And guess what? We only really need one pink triangle and one white triangle. That's gonna give you an extra pink and white triangle for a future block, or you could go ahead and put them together as a half square triangle for something else. So there's the first part of our prep work. Next, let's bring this back because we're gonna be doing some snowballing, okay? Y'all remember snowballing? We're gonna take our green two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. There should be four of those. We're gonna lay them just like this. And then we have four two and a half by two and a half inch squares. We're gonna turn these to we're gonna lay them pretty side down and we're going to mark them with a heat erasing pen, water soluble marker, some kind of marker that's not gonna mess up your fabrics. We're gonna draw a line from corner to corner, just one line right through the middle of these pieces. Just like that. Like that. Like that. And we got one more left to do. And like that. 
Jane, you want to skip to the end? <laughs> I really like tomorrow's block. I do. All right, so we're going to be snowballing with these two and a half inch pieces. We're going to lay them right on to, give me just a second. We're going to lay them right onto our green pieces. And I need you to be mindful of the way that you're laying them onto your green pieces. Okay, two of them you'll lay just like this. I have to turn my pieces so that I'm, I don't want to get it mixed up. And two of them will be just like this. Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, there we go. Two with the diagonal going this way and two with the diagonal going this way. It seems blurry to you. It might be out of focus a little bit. Sometimes my camera will focus on the lines or sometimes the writing <laughs> that happens. So great to see everybody today. I think uh, if you're sewing with me live, go ahead and set your machine ready to sew. Uh, actually, right this, the first thing we're going to do with the snowballing is we are sewing directly on the line that we just drew from corner to corner. We're not adding a quarter inch seam allowance to these pieces. We are sewing directly on that line. Make sure two of your lines are going like this, and then flip your blocks over, and two of them should be going just like this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to sew directly on the line. Line up those pieces. Your needle should follow right straight on that line. There's two. There's three, and I'm getting ready to ask our first questions for the day. Joan, if you use a pencil, that would be fine. If you use a heat erasing pen, or a water soluble marker, those also would be just as just as good to mark your lines with. I'm using a marker that you probably shouldn't be using in your fabric and your quilts because I don't know that it washes out, but I'm using something that'll show up in the video. Okay, here is the second part of our prep work that we need to do for this block. We just did our snowballs and we're gonna take these and we need to trim and now we're gonna be showing our quarter inch seam, right? We're gonna trim the extra portion, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So we do not want to trim this section that is into our green. We're trimming each one line up the line that we just sewn with the line quarter inch on your ruler and trim all of this extra parts away. Just like that. And you're going to repeat that for each one of the four sections.
let's go ahead and start with our this or that questions for today. This or that, if you want to play along. When sleeping, do you sleep with the fan on or no fan at all? Do you sleep with the fan or no fan? That is a question number one for today. And I'm just going through and trimming off the extra quarter inch, leaving a quarter inch. My words seem to be so hard today. <laughs> and just like that, we have these little snippets. Gonna throw those in the basket. This is our prep work for today. We're gonna take this over to the iron. Let me get that heating back up. Wake up iron, it's time to go to work. Miss Vicki, uh, I think you need to be careful if you mix washed and unwashed pre-washed fabrics together. I've done it before, but you might have some issues once the final quilt is done and you wash it. Uh, I've done it, but I think you probably need to be mind mindful of mixing your pre-washed with your washed. Pre-washed with unwashed fabric. There might be some shrinking differences, right? So just be mindful of that. So I'm getting my iron warmed back up. We're going to go ahead and press this. I'm going to press it. Usually I press to the dark side, but I'm going to press it so that my seam goes to the little white section, the little triangle that we formed. You could also press your seams open if you like. Second, this or that. Do you prefer a book that you can hold and flip the pages or an ebook or maybe an audiobook? A book, paper in your hand, ebook or audiobook? I'm going to get these four little triangles pressed open and then we're ready to lay out this block. So there's one. Here's two. There's our third one. And our fourth one. Just scanning through. I'm going to give y'all a second to catch up if you're sewing with me live. Just letting you know, if you have questions for me, uh, it would be really easy for me to see them if you put them in all caps because I'm scanning through lots and lots of comments and they're small on my phone and I have bifocals, but sometimes even I have a hard time reading all of the comments. So if you have questions, if you type them in all caps, that would be really, really helpful for me. So our prep work is done. We're ready to go ahead and lay out this, this block, right? We have our two background and pink triangles 
we have our four units that we just snowballed the little triangle in and then we have two two and a half by two and a half pink squares and two two and a half by two and a half inch red squares and we're ready to have some fun laying out this block I'm going to try to lay it out upside down so that it makes really good sense to you. <laughs> so we're going to start just like this. Let me get the board in the view. There we go. So here's our two bigger triangles right in of this top corner. Next, we're going to take the four units that we snowballed the little triangle in. And one goes here. And one goes here, one goes here, and here. Uh, 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 nope, hold on a second. I've got one flipped around. <laughs> Y'all have to stay on top of me. I'm flipping stuff all in the wrong direction. Here we go. That makes more sense, right? Just like this. And then we're going to take a pink square and lay that there and there. And we're filling in with the two red squares. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to lay out their pieces for their block. Make sure it's all right. Yes, we're good. <laughs> Question number three, do you prefer working on projects alone or with a team? Would, if you're working on a project, would you rather work alone or do you work better in a team setting? I find uh, I get the most done if I work alone. <laughs> if I'm working by myself, I can be really productive and focused. And when I'm working in a team, sometimes I have more fun, but I get a lot less done, right? I think for me, it really depends on the mood that I'm in for the day. Sometimes I just prefer to be by myself and I'm okay with that. Then every once in a while, I like to have some engagement. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday with me. We've done some prep work and we're ready to start uh, filling in these pieces Pauline, are you talking about filling in for the sections, the empty spaces of the quilt design? Absolutely flying geese would work for that. Jean, uh, I do have these videos numbered. I have, if you look on my channel, there's a playlist where all of these videos are saved. So they're one by one by one. And then the title of the video, at the end, I put the number of the block. So it'll say prairie flower, traditional quilt block tutorial, video number 27. And they're all saved together. So you could just scroll through and see all of them. Yeah, let's go over the questions one more time and then we're gonna start sewing at these blocks together. So we're starting today's questions with some this or that's. Uh, when sleeping, do you like the fan on or off? When reading, do you prefer an actual book or an ebook or audio book? And uh, when you're working on a project, do you prefer to work alone or work with a team? Those are the first three. 
Number four, do you like classical art or modern art? Do you lean more classical or more art modern? I know Miss Sally with her quilts, she likes the modern quilts, right? So great to see everybody. So great to see you. So we have one more thing to do before we start piecing this block together. And we're going to sew together this half square triangle right here in the corner. I'm going to flip my background, the lighter fabric, onto the pink. And I'm going to take my marker and just mark this little seam right there. That way I know which one I'm sewing. By the time I move it over to the sewing machine, now's the time when you want to make sure that you have your quarter inch seam allowance set to your machine, right? And we're going to sew this half square triangle together. I tend to be sort of a mix of in between. I like both classical and modern, not really one more than the other. Uh, so I'm an equal parts of both. I like both classical, traditional, and modern. All right, so I have that seam sewn. I'm gonna trim off those dog ears. And we're going to press this half square triangle open. Dun, 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 dun. Pressing it open. And then there is our half square triangle. This should measure. Let's do a count. One, two, three, four. This half square triangle, if you're making it in a different way other than the way that I showed you, this half square triangle finishes at four and a half by four and a half. So if you've made one bigger and you're trimming it down, trim it to four and a half by four and a half. Our last this or that question, when traveling, would you prefer train or airplane? Train or plane? I've never been on a train. I want to take a train trip one day. Train or plane? That's the last this or that question for the day. Going to give you a second to get this half square triangle done. Train or plane? I've always wanted to take a train for a trip somewhere. I think that would be so much fun. I don't mind flying, but I've done that. I want to take a train somewhere. I think that would be so much fun. So here we are. We have our block coming together, right? The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put together this four patch. All right, so I'm going to flip the red square onto the pink one. And then the pink one onto the red one. I'm going to sew these two seams with a quarter inch seam allowance. So there's the first one, and then our second. We can go ahead and press those open. I'm going to press to the darker side of these two units, okay? 
And what that's going to do, it's going to help us nest our seams right in the middle of that four patch. Ooh, this block is coming together. It's coming together. So there's our two little units. We're gonna take this and flip it right onto the other one. And so that connecting seam right in the middle of this four patch with a quarter inch seam allowance. I live in Virginia. The other questions. Oh good, y'all are on it. Thank you so much. I'm gonna sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're nesting that seam right in the middle. And then we can open this up. See how pretty that is with our seams nested right in the middle. And we're gonna press this. And then we're ready to start putting together all of these pieces. Even though there's a lot of prep work for this block, I do think if you are chain piecing, making multiple blocks and chain piecing all of your pieces, that this block would actually come together pretty quickly. There we go. There we go. I think a train trip would be so much fun. So I have a couple of other just normal questions lined up for today. What skill would you like to master? It could be related to sewing. It might be related to cooking. Like I would love to learn how to make bread. To make really good bread. I would like to master that skill one day. <laughs> What skill would you like to master that you uh, have not tried yet? Or maybe something that you're doing, something you have tried, and you really want to master it. So let's go ahead and start assembling these four units. We're going to take this one and flip it there. And I don't want to get these turned around at the sewing machine. So I'm just marking the seam that I'm going to be sewing. We're going to take this green unit and flip it. And I'm going to mark that so I don't sew the wrong side. We're sewing these seams also with a quarter inch seam allowance. I would really like to learn how to make really good bread. So there's our first one, and we're bringing over the second set. I would also like to be able to make ice cream. <laughs> So we have these units pieced together. We're going to go ahead and press those. Ooh, woodworking. Yes. 
So here's our first one, and that goes just like this. See how the snowballing really helps make this, this block so much easier? And then these two go just like this. And we end up with a four patch that's going to come together just like this. Pretty, right? That's pretty. Ooh, Nadine, you have a hand crank and an electric ice cream machine. I love homemade ice cream and I love homemade bread. One day I'm going to master those skills. How about this question? Rosie, you missed a question. What is a skill that you would like to master? A skill that you would like to master. We're going on the second question. What is the best way to start your day? Snowballing, Lisa, you'll have to go back and watch the replay. Or some of the earlier blocks that we did, we did snowballing. It's just an easy way to make these triangles in this one little particular unit. Come back and watch the replay because I think if you miss that part, uh, it'll explain it a little bit better. A little bit better than what I could show you at this point but yeah it's a really easy way to make this little triangle right in these sections here what is the best way to start the day I like starting my mornings in quiet <laughs> I like it quiet and peaceful in the morning I like coffee in the morning and quiet for me, that's the best way to start my day. We're going to go ahead and start piecing together this four patch. We're going to take this green unit and flip it onto this four patch. Let's go ahead and mark that little seam right there. Then we're going to take our half square triangle and flip it, flip it over just like this. And I'm marking that little seam right there. Playing the guitar in the morning. That sounds like a great way to start the day. Reading your Bible. Yes, that's probably the way I should start every morning. <laughs> right? Yes. We're going to go ahead and sew these seams. I think it's really important for me to get my mood right first thing in the morning because for me it affects my look my overview for the rest of the day right I got to get my mood straight in the morning So we are coming right along. We're going to go ahead and press these two seams. Vicki, you want to be a champ at free motion quilting? You can do it. You can do it. It just takes practice. It's just like anything else. It just takes practice. I was thinking about uh, my violin. <laughs> I'm learning to play the violin and it's so easy to get frustrated when you're learning something new, right? Because you see all these videos and it they make it look so easy. 
so effortless and it's so beautiful and it looks like they're not even thinking about what they're doing they're just playing this gorgeous music and then I pick up my violin and it screeches and it's squeaky and I don't know the notes and I get frustrated really easily right but if you really stop and think about it when you watch those videos you don't think about the hours they spent getting to where they are right now right so when we watch these quilting videos and it looks like these pieces are just coming together so easily or you watch someone quilting their quilt and it just looks like they're just not even thinking about it and their quilting is so perfect and beautiful you really have to stop and think about how much time they've spent getting to where they are right and then it kind of makes it, it takes the weight off of us right if we just practice and take our time and do it and do it and do it we get better and better and better right I have to remind myself all the time when I start getting frustrated with the violin and I'm tempted to quit <laughs> that if I just hang in there, if I just hang in there and keep going, I show improvement, right? Each time and it just gets easier and I get better each time. So at this point, we have one more seam to sew to finish up this block. We're going to turn this unit right down onto the other one. And we're sewing this seam right here to finish up this block. That's so interesting, Donna. I bet you he has some stories to tell about the instruments that he's made. Our last question for the day. Our last question for the day. Y'all know I couldn't go one day without asking a food-related question. Are there any foods that when growing up you absolutely could not stand to eat? But as an adult, it's one of your favorites. Right, Vicki? We want to be instantly... Instantly experts at everything we do, right? <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. We want to instantly be, be really good at what we do, right? I think that's just our nature. Thank y'all for the encouragement. I'm going to keep on practicing the violin. I'm going to pick up some, some stuff to start learning how to make bread when all of this craziness is over. I'm going to do it. But what is something that as a kid you could not stand to eat, but as an adult, you actually really love it? I'm going to go ahead and sew this last seam for this block. And I'm going to give that a press and we're going to reveal our finished prairie flower block. Ooh, it's so pretty. It's a pretty one. She's a pretty little block. When I was younger, I could not eat a string bean to save my life. I couldn't do it. A green bean. We call them string beans. <laughs> but now as an adult, I really like them. You couldn't pay me to eat a string bean when I was a little kid. My grandfather saved my life one dinner at <laughs> one night at dinner. 
My Nana, she told me I had to eat all my string beans before I could get up from the table, and I just couldn't do it. I could not do it. I was actually making myself sick just sitting there looking at them. And when everybody left, I was sitting at the table by myself, and he came in, and he took my string beans, and he threw them in the trash. And he saved the day. <laughs> We never told anybody what he did, but pretty sure he saved my life that night because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Here is our finished prairie flower block. I think this was a lot of fun. We did a lot of prep work, right? But it comes together so pretty. I think I'm going to put it in this empty space right there at the top of my quilt. I think it's interesting how our taste buds and the kinds of foods that we like change as we get older, right? I used to not like cilantro, and now I could put cilantro on everything. I put cilantro on my pizza. When we eat tacos, I could replace the lettuce in my taco with cilantro, just a handful of cilantro on my taco. Yes, I love it. Didn't like it as a kid though. I cannot wait to go through all of your answers from the live chat today, this evening. I think that's gonna be so much fun. One of the highlights in my day, reading through all of your answers. If I've missed any questions, I truly ap apologize. If you have questions for me, go ahead and ask them now and maybe I can answer them. Put them in all caps. That makes it really easy for me to see. Thank you, everybody, for moderating our chat today. Thank you so much. I was, I was getting a little stressed thinking I was going to have to pay attention to these pieces which I almost flipped around the wrong way anyway, and moderate. So thank you all so much for keeping an eye out on the chat. I cannot wait to see your prairie flower blocks. I like this one a lot. Donna, Harlan hates cilantro. He doesn't even like to sit next to me when I eat cilantro he cannot even stand the smell of it <laughs> and then I walk around smelling like cilantro for the rest of the night because I pile it on they say cilantro there's something about it you either absolutely love it or you absolutely hate it and Harlan said that he read somewhere where some people just have this gene that they were born with where cilantro smells and tastes like soap I don't know if that's true or not <laughs> so yes our finished prairie flower block I like this a lot this was a lot of fun if you turn it the other way, it looks like a tree. Huh. That's interesting. All right. Yes, for tomorrow's block, I'm going to pull that up on the screen. <laughs> Let's pull up tomorrow's block. Tomorrow, we are doing a, the Jacob's Ladder. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? The Jacob's Ladder. Tomorrow's block is going to also be an 8-inch quilt block. So let's look at that block for a second. The whole block will measure 8.5 by 8.5. You see all those little tiny pieces, those little four patches inside this 8-inch block? We're going to streamline the making of this block tomorrow. We're going to make it a little bit more simple, and it's going to come together... Actually, I'm hoping pretty quick. <clears throat> that Jacob's Ladder.
Sally, this is your second favorite block. Right, Nita? Isn't that pretty? Tiny pieces. Yes. Can you imagine cutting one and a half by one and a half inch pieces and making four patches with them? <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to streamline the process a little bit and hopefully make it a little bit easier. And I'm excited to show you that. So these are the pieces here on the screen for what you need for tomorrow's block if you want to make it. I'm going to pull on the screen also a couple of different layouts that you could do with the Jacob's Ladder block. I've broken it into three different sections, okay? The top section is if you just take this block, same layout, and repeated it with your rows, that's the quilt that you would end up making. The second section, if you rotate the block every other block, that's what it would look like. But what I really love is the bottom section. Isn't that just amazing? That is the Jacob's Ladder block laid out just in a different way. Doesn't it look like, like a Moroccan tile floor? Isn't that just stunning? Lynn, it's a lot of pieces, but guess what? We're actually going to streamline the making of this block. You're not going to believe how simple the Jacob's Ladder block is going to end up being. Oh, Vicki, I would love to come for dinner. Yes. Oh, Connie, you have an AccuQuilt die cutter that'll cut those strips out for you. Then you're going to streamline the process even more, right? Now, this is, uh, this is three different layouts with this block. But this is not the only possibilities that you could do with this block. You just keep on turning them. You get even more really awesome, interesting layouts. These were just some of my favorites. <laughs> yes, Miss Nadine, you'll just come back and watch the replay. It'll be here waiting for you. Yes, I think that looks like a floor, like really intricate laid out tile flooring. I think that would be stunning as a quilt. Eight half square triangles for sure. Yes, we're going to streamline this block the best way that I know how. The way that my mind would make this block, we're streamlining it tomorrow. It's so great to see everybody. Thank you all, all for spending part of your Sunday with me. I do not take your time for granted. I appreciate you spending time with me and uh, the time that we have together, the time that you have with everybody else. It's one of the reasons why we're doing this video, right? It's to have some interaction outside of our normal everyday life right now. <laughs> It was so weird, y'all. I went to the Targets yesterday. It's so weird what going to the store, how much going to the store has changed, right? Seeing everybody wearing your face mask. Everybody's got the face mask on. They count the number of people who come into the store and how many leave because there's only so many in the store at a, at a certain time. And everything is so different right now, right? Ah, Sue, your daughter's name is Lisa. Yay.
It's so great to see everybody. Yes, so I'm going to take this off the screen and you can focus on Hazel. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Hazel. Hazel, have you thought of any ideas for your charm pack quilt yet? Oh, Sally, that is such a good idea. It would be fun to get together and do a show and tell. That would be fun. I'm going to tell you, I've had so much fun over on the creative crew group seeing pictures that, of everybody's blocks. It's kind of like a virtual picture show and tell, right? Every day, everyone's posting their blocks. It's so much fun. And the stores are kind of bare. Yes, Miss Jean. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, the time for tomorrow. I try to come in the noon hour for me. So between 12 and 1230 Eastern Standard Time is the time I like to get started here on YouTube. That could vary though, so don't hold me 100% to that because Arlen is working from home and tomorrow's Monday. So he has meetings pop up here and there and when that happens, he has to use all of the internet <laughs> and, uh, and I work around him with the live videos. But I like to come on between 12 and 12.30 Eastern Standard Time. You'll have to convert that to where you are in Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure what time that would be for you. But, um, yeah, that's, that's usually the time that I like to try to come on. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. Lisa, that's a good question. You wonder how this would look with the anvil block. That's a good question. Where's my anvil block? I have to move my head out of the way. <laughs> oh, I see it. Uh, my colors don't go exactly too well together to have them side by side. But actually, I think that would look really cool, Lisa. Again, one more shout out to everybody who has moderated for me today. I appreciate you so much. Trying to moderate and do everything in the live, that's a lot of work. So thank you all all so much for keeping an eye on our chat. I appreciate you so much. Hazel, you haven't figured out a quilt for your charm packs yet. All right. Keep me updated. Keep me updated. So I've enjoyed spending some time with you. I really like this prairie flower block. And just letting you know, there I believe there are several different variations. If you do a Google search for prairie flower quilt block, uh, I know of one other variation of a prairie flower block that shows up. There might be more than that. But I really like this one, right? It's pretty. I look forward to putting it on my design wall. Thank you all so much for spending time with me. I, had, I hope you had fun. I hope you had fun answering the fun little questions. And you know what? We'll be back tomorrow with the Jacob's Ladder. If you're new to sewing or quilting, don't be intimidated by what that block looks like. We're streamlining it tomorrow. We're going to simplify it and make it easy. And I'm going to show you how in the live. All right. So I hope you have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Or if you're already into Monday, I hope you have an awesome week. I'll see y'all all tomorrow, okay? I love ya. Bye.